what they go do with me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear on the Hey guys, we're on a new episode of Talk of the Town. Today we have a special guest. Wayne you know. I'm special. Yeah, I feel like first of all, we never I never sat down with an exec like on camera. Really? No. Okay. Why not? Um, because they got secrets, I guess they can't talk about. Secrets? Nah, I'm joking. But now nah, I don't know. I never, um, they never was, or people be like, I want to wait to tell my story, or I don't do interviews, or... Stories is a forever evolving thing, so it's like, you know... Yeah, but now nah, I definitely be speaking to executives and stuff, but like, never on camera, though. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thank you okay, for I'm coming. <laughs> so, um, we're going to play a game just to, like, ice break a little bit. Okay. I'm going to just ask you a question. Just say, just answer quick as you could. Okay. Question, that kind of mind. So, where are you from? Harlem. Bronx and Harlem. Bronx and Harlem? Yeah, I'm okay. from Bronx and Harlem. If you could have any accent, which one would you pick? Mine? Like, I mean, from New York. I'm from New York. Like, I'm, I'm from Harlem. Like, my accent is a mixture between Bronx and Harlem, so I would just say... The one I have. So you wouldn't want to have any other accent? Hell no. <laughs> I want to talk like nobody else. Like you mean like if I, like a London accent or yeah. nah? Hell London, no. Southern nah. Memphis. Mm -mm. Memphis mm -mm. The accent is going crazy now. <laughs> I'm too old to be changing my accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your sign? Capricorn. Favorite song to play in the car. Favorite song to play in the car? Mm -hmm. Shit, as fast as I can. Yeah, not the studio vibes, in the car. In the car. Mm -hmm. Favorite song to play in the car? Um, I would say, uh, what's this Frank Ocean song? Nikes. These bitches want Nikes. They looking Frank for a Ocean check. Frank Ocean in the car? Okay. I mean, it depends. I, listen to, I don't really listen to music in my car. Why? Because I have to listen to music all, all day, every day. Okay, so it's okay, like, okay. by the time I get in the car, yeah. I get to sit, drive, be with my thoughts. I don't really listen to music that much in the car. I get it. I get it. Um, Favorite bar? I don't really drink like that, so I don't got a favorite no. bar. <laughs> like a lyric. Oh, oh a lyric? <laughs> oh, I thought you had yeah, a favorite bar. You get some bar. No. Um, niggas is hot heads and the bullets is he seeking. Mm, who said that? Jay-Z. Okay. Okay. Um... A one-hit wonder that should have had a longer career. A one-hit wonder that should have had a longer career? Mm -hmm. Chingy. Chingy was fire. But he had more than one hit, though. But, okay. Ching, but Ching, I say Chingy. Chingy was fire. I thought he was fire. Okay. Um, favorite videographer? Fred Focus. Okay. Um, if you could listen to one artist for the rest of your life, who would it be? One artist for the rest of my life? Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you... I hate, I hate those... All right, one artist for the rest of my life. Okay. I'm going to do it. You already lived life, so it's like moving forward. One artist you know for the rest saying? of my life. This going to sound crazy. Tyler, the creator. Okay. Tyler, the Nobody's creator. ever said that. People say Lil Baby, Lil Dirt. You know? I mean, they, they, I mean, they kind of, they still, they not new, but. I really enjoyed Tyler the Creator's music. Yeah, I remember. I also said with a lot of younger people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said with a lot of young. Yeah, I'm, I was about to say Michael Jackson, but I say Tyler the Creator. Okay. Okay. Um, favorite fashion brand? Favorite fashion brand? Um, yeah. Shit, I have so many. I would say um, Capital. Favorite fashion brand? Yeah. Capital. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's a Japanese brand. Well, okay. I say what I got on right now, Warren Lotus. Okay. Warren Lotus, yeah. Um, best fast food restaurant. Chick fil A. Okay. Least favorite water brand. All water the same to me. For real? Yeah, all that shit the same. What? You got my, like I'm oldest. So I used to drink water out the fire hydrant when I was a kid. For real, we used to drink water out the fire hydrant, the fucking the faucet in the park. Like we drink water from anywhere. Like so, we ain't kids. So we get some water, you Gucci. As long as it's cold, I hate room temperature water. Room yeah, temperature water is like drinking either. sweat. Like, I don't like that either. Okay, and then one song, one song you hate that everybody loves. One song I hate, or that you dislike. Hate is a strong word. One song you dislike that everybody loves. A song that I dislike. Oh, that everybody loves. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because even though I kind of dislike the song, I still know it. I say One Dance by Drake. Okay. I don't I don't hate it, but it's it like... It played out. It was played out. No, but it's like... All right, so just real quick, right? Mm -hmm. I remember one day, I've never turned that song on, like mm -hmm. deliberately, like I'm going to listen to the song. Right. And then one day I was somewhere and the song was playing and I knew all the words. And I was like, how the fuck is because it's the radio? Like, yes. You know what I mean? The um, radio. 
Yeah, and that was that was the last one. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, the radio. I feel like right now, do mm-hmm. you feel like radio is important right now? It plays its part. I don't think it's as important as it was when I was a kid, but it's, it definitely still matters, though, to an extent. It def- if you want to get a good publishing deal, it does. Okay. That's a fact. Okay. I feel like the kids now are still like trying to like learn, I guess. Everybody thinks streaming, streaming is the thing right now. I mean, it's streaming is one aspect to how you get your shit out, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, I was having this conversation with Jim Jones yesterday, mm-hmm. and I asked him, I said, Jim... I've known Jim since I was 18 years old. Hmm. I'm 40. I said, Jim, I said, how many songs you think you got? And he was like, got a lot. Yeah, but because I, I, it's I've been around. I've seen Jim record songs that I heard, I seen him record that they never came out. Mm-hmm. Mad songs. So yeah. he was like, he said that he was doing something with some company and it it was like 2,300 songs that actually came out. Okay. And um, wait a second, what the hell was we talking about? Um, we was talking about um. Streaming and stuff. stuff, So this is the point that he made to me, right? He was like, Mm -hmm. um, he said, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, while those are like the marquee products of that brand, Mm -hmm. they got a bunch of other shit that's just in stores. Yeah. And he was like, that's kind of how I looked at the music. Like, you just got to have as much shit out as possible Mm -hmm. to be heard more. So it's like streaming is one aspect, but you got to remember, like, as much as we'd like to believe that everybody can afford ten dollars or fifteen dollars a month for a some streaming, people some people can't, and all they might have is the radio. So radio, SoundCloud, no. I guess. Yeah, SoundCloud. SoundCloud about to start charging though. I, I think. I don't know. I mean, I could see how. I could see why if they did, yeah. but like you know, like SoundCloud is like the entry point for every single artist. You know what yeah. I mean? To get to kind of get their for name sure. out there. You know what I mean? For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm-hmm. So how how's your mental been? How you been like staying afloat? I guess that's mentally? a good question. Um, I feel like the music industry be stressful. So I be yeah. I mean, I don't really deal with like I was telling my brother that I'm with today. Like, so many people get caught up in like the um their jobs, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't really like the toughest shit I've ever gone through didn't come from no music stuff. Mm. So like. For the most part, I don't let work stress me out. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Like I'm, I'm gonna get it done. If I don't get it done, I'm gonna figure out it. If I don't know how to get it done, I'm gonna figure it out. I'll figure that aspect out. But like for the most part, my mental has been pretty good. Like my my oldest daughter just graduated from college, so that was good. That's my young, yeah, my youngest daughter just graduated from from elementary, so you know, like my son is doing good. Like everybody, my family is doing well. Like I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't live in New York no more, so it's good to be back home. I just okay. I drove around the past couple of days and seen. Like it's crazy, like how I could New drive. New buildings and all types. Yeah, of no, it's insane. New buildings, but like, yeah, just just being able to be back home has been good for me. So, I'm happy. So even though you live in Atlanta, New York still feels like home to you. It's home. It is. I was born and raised in New York. I know, but like, you I know, mean, no, I don't live here, so I, know, yeah. I do be like, yeah, I want to go home. You <laughs> know what I mean? But yeah, but like, I feel like you know, people be liking Atlanta because it be spacious. They feel like, I feel like. Black success is kind of like what Atlanta is. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, I feel like this. The thing well, about um, I don't know. And, and and I'll say the difference between like Atlanta, just the South period, and like the North is like accessibility to own stuff. You know what right. I mean? Like like when I was a kid, my family, my dad's side of the family is from Fayetteville, North Carolina. So I used mm-hmm. to spend summers out there, and I used to go out there. Like they own houses, stores, strip club, all types of stuff. So mm-hmm. I got a chance to see people owning stuff. Like here, you really know people who own. You you can't own the building. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It, well, got a little studio. Yeah, a little like a little whatever. Or or people renting most things. So it's yeah. like because the the city is. It's so over capacity mm-hmm. that it's not a lot to go around. So like in Atlanta, yeah, is is more ownership because it's more space, it's tons of land. But I mean, what I do like about it, I like peace, I like quiet, and I yeah. grew up around chaos and noise. My whole like I was born in the Bronx and then moved to Harlem when I was thirteen. So like my whole life been noise. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. So um so yeah, it's just peaceful right mm-hmm. now. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like, you know, everybody would know how you got into music. I feel like you tell your story all the time. All right, so let's take a different turn on it. We could we could talk okay, about it. So <laughs> let's say when did it start being serious for you, I guess. Serious? I mean, I've had different instances when it's been serious for me. I mm-hmm. feel like when I got in it at very young, mm-hmm. my seriousness was just for me to be around. It wasn't about 
necessarily making I wanted to make money, but mm -hmm. I didn't know anything, right? Like I'm just I'm this kid who dropped out of high school, gets a job. Uh, now I'm around all like my favorite artists, seeing them in the office as far as working in the mailroom, and then mm -hmm. I'm interning and I'm still around, but I don't really know. I don't even know anything. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, I say I took it serious because I wanted to. I wanted to be given a shot, and I, I think I've taken every. I've everything that I've tried to do. I've applied myself for. Okay. Like I've applied myself to get my fucking CDO license before. Like I've done. Okay. It. I've tried mad shit. So like okay. everything I basically do, I, I give it a shot, like a true shot. And music was something I, I from this from from day one when I got into it, I tried to give it a shot. Okay. And when did you notice you were skilled in like whatever field you was in at that moment? Mm. Or do you feel like you learned it later in life? I think? felt like I had good ideas, poor execution, and I was too eager when I was okay. young. But okay. I, I learned. A kid. That's being a kid, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, shit. Nowadays, kids think that they fucking smarter than everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like motherfuckers think they know everything, and yeah. I mean, but that's all. Kids, you always think you know everything. I don't think yeah. that that's a generational thing. That's just us as a people. But um, mm -hmm. honestly, for myself, uh, I started to notice that I was good. Like when I got to like my late twenties, because like all the stuff I learned. At my late teens and early twenties, being in music, it started to like kind of make sense. So I was around, I was around Dame Dash, Jay Z, and Biggs, Beanie Siegel, mm -hmm. you know, um, all these guys every day. So the, 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 everything that they're doing, I didn't really understand. But then when it's like time for me to do something with an artist, I'm like, oh, I get what they was doing. Like yeah. you know what I mean? So, um, so you say your late twenties, mm -hmm. you feel. I be feeling like, do you ever, do you feel like it was a race in a sense? Do you feel like you it mean? took a long time? Yes and no. I think like time is all relative to what you're trying to do at the time. So it's like, I can't say it took a long time because I got into music. Like I literally, I dropped out of high school at 16, mm -hmm. 17, I was in GD school, trade school, GD school. I tried to do a bunch of shit. Yeah. But 18 is when I got into the mailroom. By the time I'm 18 going on 19 is when I'm like coming into the music shit or whatever. And then I got into it. Like like by, by 19, I was I was in it. I like I was in it. Like I'm going back to my block, like, yo, I was just seeing Cam and, and Jim and okay. them today and da da da. So I was in it. But like um my success did take some time. Mm -hmm. But like had I had the opportunity to have the success that I got when I was older, I would have fucked it up. I would have fucked it up bad. Mm -hmm. Like if I at, at my um in my early twenties, if I would have made six figures, mm -hmm. it would have been bad. Like I I probably went to jail would have or, some, or something. Huh? You think would have blew it? Like your money? Yeah, yeah. Because I would I was I thought I was like I would have when I was younger I thought I was invincible right. at one point in time. Right. So like I would, I would have thought that like I could do anything or treat things however I wanted to. I didn't have I had humility, but I didn't like money. Money is what messes people up more than yeah. anything. Before you get the drugs, the 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 mm. all the other bullshit, it's the money. Like mm. not being able to accept that responsibility for real. Okay, the reason I asked that was because I see like I'm include myself in this. Mm -hmm. A lot of us be like hard on ourselves because we feel like we're not where we want to be mm -hmm. in the industry at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's cool that you're saying like you appreciated it later in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I feel like yeah, I feel like we'd be all hard on ourselves, especially on what to expect. I think that. Because but I did some stuff. Like I did a little bit of stuff. Like I did some like freelance marketing stuff. Yeah, I got a couple artists on, but like I've never worked at a label. But you're very young, so th th this is the thing, right? Like because you got to keep in mind, you're not that many years out of like your adolescence, right? Like mm -hmm. you, it's not that long ago, like. Seven. I was with my <laughs> look, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like seven, eight years ago, you was a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. Like seven, eight years ago, I was a, it's in my thirties. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, you got to give yourself some grace in the space of like you want to do these things, but you need to acquire the skills and the patience mm -hmm. and even the mental fortitude to be able to handle it. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I, I keep reiterating like how um, we we all want an opportunity, we all want to make money, mm -hmm. but yo, when that shit comes. If you ain't got it here, it's going to be worthless. Like, mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll come and it'll go. Right. And, of course, like, because you're putting in the work, you're striving for something, you want something. But time, you can't get in the way of that shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't get in the way of it. 
definitely needed to hear that just now. <laughs> um, okay, but congratulations, you was on the Billboard Hip Hop Power Player. Mm -hmm. So, in your eyes, what do you what do you feel like as a power player? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. So, so like shit like that, I, and the salute the Billboard. I I I love that I made it to um be a Billboard Power Player. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. I'm not going to say it don't matter. Yeah. Because like rest in peace to my brother Hovain, like we always felt a little slighted when um these lists used to come out. He's like, damn, like we ain't make it because but we never looked at nobody. It was like why they made it and not us. Yeah. We just knew that we was putting in the work. So I would yeah. say like you know, I mean it's a good acknowledgement, but like I'm not doing it for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm right. I, I really do it to make money. Like you know what I mean, I care about making bread. I don't, I don't care about like the accolades yeah. and all that other shit. I want to make money. You feel me? Right. But I mean like. But even so, I feel like, you know, everybody that was on there kind of had a resume. You know oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like... Oh, I can move some shit. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I, I can move... Oh, no, listen. I mean, everybody answered my calls. Like, it, I could, like, I could call most people or I could DM yeah. most people. They're going to answer me. So it's like, um, what, what I, what, but a power player, to me, I just looked at it as a person who's respected in the space of like, yo, when you look at this person and you think of things that happen behind the scenes or things that lead up to an event or things mm -hmm. that go go good or maybe a record, maybe an endorsement deal, maybe some mm -hmm. content. I'm one of those people, you know what I'm saying? And um it just it happens, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm a I, I wanted to be rich and nobody knew me. It's <laughs> only because I got in the media that people started seeing my face. But once my face was seen and I made money off it, I was like, well, I'm never getting off a camera. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say like how do you balance wearing so many hats whereas this you know, everyday struggle, you as a personality. Yeah. Still doing the executive on the back end. You had, I don't know if you still have the management group. Oh, trying to go offense? Yeah. Um, nah, I still do management, but like, I don't, I'm not trying to brand it. Okay. Like, because I don't, I'm not trying to, I'm not fishing for my company for me to be the guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to position myself like, yeah. this is Wayno's company and you could sign here. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why I went to QC. But, okay. um, as to answer your question about like how do I juggle so many hats is like yeah. I like making money I got kids you know what I mean I got responsibilities and not just my kids and my responsibilities but I take care of people you know what I mean and I, I and I provide for people and I not only I'm not just giving money out I try to provide opportunities for people and mm -hmm. the more I work permits me to be in this the driver's seat where I can say yo get in we're gonna go over here and do this you feel me yeah. so I'm I just do it because like that's the hustler in me. Like, I grew up in the fucking Bronx <laughs> and Harlem and watching my dad hustle and bust his ass the day he died, watching my mom work whatever job she could to take care of me and my sister and sometimes, you know, my cousins. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just who we is, you know what I mean? So it's kinda of hustler in you, but do you have a favorite hat you like wearing or um do you like it all still? I mean, I'm I'm all about discovery. I don't get married to like to to the position because okay. things always change, change yeah. and people swap out so like for the most part like um I do love I love doing management you know what I mean I, mm -hmm. I, I even though management is like a thankless job that nobody gives a <laughs> fuck about you um but I do have like yeah. clients I do have clients though that like I really you know we got great relationships and we have great working relationships and yeah. relationships outside of that so like I do like doing management I love doing A and R like I love discovering new artists and helping them become known um. And then I do like doing media because I like to talk, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. I just love everything I'm doing. And there's other things that I want to get into, and I'll le learn to love those as well. So, yeah, you said that, like, management is kind of like a thankless job. Why do you think that? Because it is. Because the thing about being a manager is, is like, you're tasked with, like, all the the babies yeah you got to be responsible and other people don't want to be responsible like if, if you somewhere in your artist like you let's say hypothetically speaking you at the club and you really don't want to be there but your artist is like yo no, i ain't trying to be in the crib i'm trying to be out and now you got to spend extra time mm -hmm. shit i don't really i don't drink you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's like i gotta sit there and i gotta be the sober one i gotta mm -hmm. drive and make sure we get here to you know what i mean we get home safely and all of that mm -hmm. and i just want to be in my bed you know what i mean i just want to be chilling i might want to just be with my kids and then nobody not i don't think that you deserve a pat on the back for everything you do mm -hmm. but like you seldomly see situations where um artists are appreciative to their managers that's why when things don't go right they just get rid of them 
like one one or two things or oh, i don't like this all right, i'm gonna get somebody else somebody else could do bigger than you or that's what they think and yeah you know so do you think like do you so do you think it's a better way that artists and management relationships could go better um, or it really just depends on the artist? Or- it depends on the art. It depends on both. Because I'm not going to just sit here and just big up the managers like it's not managers that don't do yeah, shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of managers. Because a, a lot of times the manager, it's like the closest role because the, the, the artist thinks like, I just need somebody to be responsible. So it'll be the homeboy first. But if the homeboy is like, or the homegirl is not trying to learn any skills mm-hmm. that can amplify the artist, then like you're just going to be stuck running in place. So I think like the best way... The best way for artist management um, relationship to work is just honesty and transparency. Like being able to talk when you're uncomfortable. I had one of my artists call me yesterday and tell me about something that they was uncomfortable with based on somebody we was working with. And I had to like kind of reassure them that it wasn't a bad situation. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And, and um, while I had to hear him out, I didn't agree with how he felt. You know what I mean? I, now I'm like, yo, you got the right to tell me how you feel. I'm not going to tell you, but I don't agree. Okay. And you got to be, you know, honest enough to say that I can't be just like, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right. Let's just. Can't be a yes man, but nah, you got to make can't. sense yeah. for the brand, for the business and everything. Yeah, because I'm just not going to steer you in the wrong way. Like, like, I've managed a lot of people. I work with a lot of people. Nobody could ever tell, say, and if they did, show me the results after <laughs> that I steered them the wrong way. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. So working in the industry back then, you saw a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, a lot of trends probably back then that is not the same now. A lot of trends now weren't like that back then. What are some trends you feel like should have stayed in the industry? That's like not really a trend. A trend, habit, anything. Habits. I, only thing I wish is that like artists um, connected a little bit more like with the artists. Like I feel like uh, technology, while it's cool that like you could be in fucking Whoever Venezuela and I could just send you a song within five seconds and for you to get on, like it's not enough like um, collaboration in a sense of relationship, right? Like I remember when I used to work with the Young Guns, um, we're walking to Sony Studios and Hit Factory is right up the block. And as we are walking, we see Little Kim, right? Mm-hmm. So like... We kids, like me, Chris and Neef, my man Peen, we just run down on little Kim like, what's up, Kim? And she's like, oh, I love your song and da-da-da. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I mean, we didn't do any work with her, but later on, like, Chris got an opportunity to work with Kim, and she remembered that. You know what I mean? When we approached her and we didn't have no ego because we was just strictly fans. We grew up watching little Kim. Right. And, um, you know, just, just that honesty permitted them to work for a little bit. And I think that like, I've, I've just seen a lot of it more when it's like genuinely being a fan. I feel like yeah. the technology takes away from like, I don't really want to tell somebody I like them because if I write this and I tell them that I like them, they could screenshot it and use it against me one day. Oh, All yes. that bullshit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. yeah, I think that like, it's like a good and bad thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, we get to see like mad different you know, mm-hmm. different parts of the world, but I feel like, like you said, those genuine connections. But I even feel like that, even in the, I don't want to say in the, in the under, in the like behind the scenes too, because mm-hmm. I feel like because the artists are always indoors, their team are always indoors. Yeah. Do you feel like that? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely, I agree, and I think that like you know, um, the thing about it is, is that. I, I think that like just culturally in certain aspects of the music, it kind of take has taken away from like like artist performances. Like, you know, after the um pandemic, like right before the pandemic, I said, damn, shit hit in like March twenty twenty. Like I, I, I haven't been living in New York. I was living in Jersey. I haven't been living here in two years. It'd be August. I've been going for two years, but like it used to be a thing to like go to SOBs and see the next young artist, you know what I mean? Yep. Hot 97, Hot 97, who's next? Yep. Power 105 used to do shit in that, in that, in every now and then. And it's like, I love what a lot of the kids in the city is doing or whatever, but it's like, I don't even know where I could possibly go see them. And if I could go see them, would I want to? Because they beefing so much. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, where's a safe space where people can perform and we can actually see them get out there and see their crowds and all of that shit? It's like, it's a little bit different now, you know? Yeah, so as far as like the upcoming kids, 4 1 was, I think, the only one to have a like show in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And then like the cops was even all over that. But like they've been having shows in Jersey because like nowhere in New York is kind of letting them kind of yeah. have I, that. I mean, I, I, I don't work in law enforcement, but if I did, I wouldn't either. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I wouldn't. Sheesh. I, I'm just keeping it 100 because like, you know, um, you got to think, right? Like, 
I feel like on the internet they are exaggerating it a bit much. Like I feel like the artist beef be beef, but like they so amplified on the internet, it makes you think it's like so big. You know but the, but it, it, the internet does it. But then I think that a lot of the artists play into the internet as well, right? Oh, like yeah. I feel like it's a, it's artists that I grew up on that like I seen when I was a kid, and a lot of them, and I'm not taking nothing away from them, but a lot of them wasn't like the gangster that they portrayed to be. Oh, yeah. So I think that today it's like. Nobody wants to take a loss in any sense, whether it's an argument, a fight, a shooting, whatever it is, yeah. it's me versus you, whatever the case may be. I'm saying like, hypothetically speaking, if I was law enforcement and I'm studying these guys every day because I'm trying to fucking catch them mm -hmm. and I know that these dudes, this and these dudes, like they do, they show, um, they, they do SVU episodes on this shit now. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. so it's like, I, yeah, where's the safe space? Because you can't risk another Irvin Plaza happening. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. risk that type of shit. So it's like, um, uh, if, if the if the culture in the music doesn't change, then it just you're gonna have to perform somewhere else. That's true. I'm I'm low key fifty fifty because I feel like the older artists be trolling and as a sense of marketing now. So I feel like the younger kids is just ex doing that extreme. What you mean, older artists trolling? I mean, like I don't know. Did you see acting little Dirk interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, how the whole tweet or post or something was trolling. It's crazy that Dirk is an older artist now, though. Not older, but you know what I'm saying? Like, these, all right, Lil Dirk is somebody that all the kids look up to, right? Yeah. So when Lil Dirk is saying, like, oh, he did that because he was trolling, you know what I'm saying? Now kids is thinking trolling is a way of marketing. Well, it was happening way before Duke, I mean, yeah, Dirk was doing, doing it. it. You know yeah. And was, people before yeah. him. I just think that, like, we in a space where everybody wants to be seen, right? And it's like, I remember I was saying this to one of my friends one day, right? Like when I was a kid, if a person, like let's say something, if the news came in your block, I don't give a fuck if a cat was stuck in a tree or <laughs> or it was a murder or whatever it was, and like a camera was there, if you did this in front of the camera and you was on the news for five seconds, it was the biggest yeah. shit. Like, oh um, my God, was look a at, drug, yes. right? So so now it's like this is the news camera now. Everybody yeah. can report how they want to report. Everybody can tell a story how they want to tell it. And I mean, they do it. The, the thing that bothers me with the music is I don't know how many people actually want to be artists or yeah. they just want to like be fucking, famous. they just want to be famous and you could do this all day yeah. now. You feel me? So. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I agree with the. I don't know who want to be artists and who wants to just be famous because I feel like even artists aren't even really getting developed how they used to back in the day. But they don't. But it's not that they're not getting developed. They don't want to be. It. it, it, it so I, I wanted. I always wanted to. I'm happy you said that because. I've only worked at three labels in my life and I've had mm -hmm. success inside being at a label and I've had success outside being a manager, mm -hmm. right? The thing when it comes to development is like people, a lot of people say artists aren't developed, artists aren't developed, artists aren't developed. A lot of artists don't want to be developed. A lot of artists that you can provide the information because I said this on another podcast where I was saying that like, yo, you can give an artist information about certain things that they could do for themselves, whether it's healthcare, whether it's um, a business manager, whether it's help with certain things, and they don't. A lot of them want, don't want to do that. Yeah. A lot of people look at being an artist as just having doing whatever you want to do, getting a bunch of money, and just being irresponsible. And I'm not saying that's every single artist. Yeah. I'm just saying that a lot of them, like Link when you can do, like yo, it's tons of people, tons of ANRs, because people, oh, ANRs don't ANR. How would you know? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's, t and I'm not saying you specifically, yeah. but it's tons of ANRs that would say, all right, yo, I want to put you in the studio with this producer, and they really going like vocal produce you. Mm -hmm. What's that? Telling you how to say shit, telling you how to get oh, in yeah. pocket, and and you know what the artists say? They 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 let their homies come around. I don't, he don't need that. How you think we got in here? How you think? It do be a lot of self sabotaging. It is, and and I just feel like we don't even have stars anymore because a lot of these artists they think they know it all. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that they don't know anything, but if you want to reach a certain type of level, you got to study. Yeah, I feel like a lot of artists don't, like you said, want to be developed. And but I also I'm they I feel like they people be giving up quickly too, because I feel like I've worked with like the. I don't want to say he hood, but I worked with like some drill artists and mm -hmm. it took a lot of time to even get them to open up and listen and to accept feedback. But I can see how so many people gave up on it because it was such a hard tassel. Well, you know I saying? think it, I, let's also. Like, like you said, you grow, you have kids and shit. You're not about to deal with another kid. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, the thing <laughs> about it is, is like, um, let's also keep in mind that 
a lot of people don't have patience because they, mm -hmm. they look at what another person has, right? Like, there's so many people that could say, like, a, let's draw artist A, B, or C, right? Yeah, yeah. Draw artist A is fucking moving. And it might just be because they had a really good song and it came at a really good moment. Mm -hmm. Draw artist B might be more talented than draw artist A, you know what I'm saying? And they might have... um. They, they might have something going a little bit, but it's taking some time. Yeah. Drill Artist C might be more talented than both A and B, yeah. and they got a harder work ethic, but the way that they're approaching their music is just taking a little bit more time, right? Yeah, but C keeps looking at A and B and saying, yo, they got the deal. That motherfucker got the watch. He got the car. Mm -hmm. I'm still in the hood. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know what? Fuck this. I ain't doing it. And then, then what do you get? So that's yeah. the thing, right? Do you want, what are you doing it for, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it 100 all of that, I want to be the best ever. All that shit is cool. You need to be trying to get your fucking money up. <laughs> That's what this shit is about. Yeah. Get your paper. And a lot of them ain't really trying to get no paper. And I'm not saying specifically drill because it's other it's genres okay. yeah. that ain't on that too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's definitely other genres. So do you feel like as an A&R, mm -hmm. you can... Hold on, where is that? So as an A&R, discover an artist, do you feel like it's a way to ensure an artist reach their full potential? Or no. like it really depends on the artist. No, it's all is 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 nothing's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It's like I look at I approach um how I do A and R and all that the same way like a person recruits in sports, right? Like mm -hmm. it's like if I go back to the I think it was the two thousand and nine NBA draft, Blake Griffin was the first person picked. Mm -hmm. The seventh person picked was Steph Curry. Okay. So that means it was six people. That they picked before they picked. And Min the Minnesota Timberwolves had two picks. They picked Johnny Flynn and Ricky Rubio and didn't pick Steph Curry. Now, you redraft that, everybody picked Steph Curry, right? Yeah. But it was about the potential and, and, and the longevity and what, and what the person wanted. So, like, when it comes to me recruiting an artist, because I get, let me tell you something. My DMs is I know, full. DMs are crazy. It's insane. But the thing about it is, is there's a lot of people that's talented out there, but you can't have potential forever. And I can't ensure this shit is not guaranteed. So it's like I've signed tons of artists that was like they had potential, but they was looking at artists A and B. Right. And was like, why not me? And I'm like Yeah, just yeah. You know? Not watching them play. Um Okay, so when you say you see artists that you have potential, but you won't have potential forever, you go based on talent? Do you go based on age? Do you go based on image? Like, what do you go based on, if anything? Um, it's a com or it's a com like it's a combination of like all. Like I say, like first and foremost, like music is. It depends on what I'm going after, right? Like it's like mm -hmm. music is a young person's game. Yeah. Like um, a lot of people don't realize and this is from my generation that when jay-z put out his first album and he was 26 mace was only 20 and mace was kicking everybody ass he was oh, selling sure. all the records you know what i'm saying it's a young person's game so yeah age is a factor into that to an extent um it's not the main factor mm. but yeah i'm not i'm not looking to sign people that's 37 and 36 and all of that and i'm not yeah. and i'm not saying that they won't be successful yeah, but i mean two chains got on at what like 30 something no he did not get on at that time two chains got on if we want to talk about getting on he was around Ludacris since Ludacris' first album mm. when he was titty boy he was on disturbing yeah, the yeah, peace yeah. compilations all of that he had been putting out music it's just when he found a sound he found a sound later on in his life yeah. but um of course, I look at talent, right? Mm -hmm. But more than talent, more than looks, more than it, work ethic. Okay. Work ethic is the most important thing. If I got to tell you to go to the fucking studio, and I got, and, and you're an artist, and you can't send me if in one week you can't send me a minimum of three to five songs, you ain't you don't want this shit. Right. You know what I mean? Nice fact. So um, so it was a complex article, mm -hmm. and it was about Ice Spice, and I'm saying that you know Ice Spice owns her masters and publishing, mm -hmm. and she doesn't have the traditional A and R. What do you think about that? What is, what's the traditional A and R? Like I don't know. <sighs> Listen, <laughs> shouts out to Ice Spice. I had I had the privilege of like pursuing her before she got yeah, signed. I, I had a, a meeting with her and her manager and Riot, mm -hmm. um, James, and you know I and. What I say about Ice Spice is that girl, this before Munch came out is when I met her. Mm -hmm. She's very smart. Yeah. She understands who she is and what she wants. Um, 
the whole thing about her not having a traditional a and like, I really don't give a fuck about that. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know why that's said because yeah. I think that um, when you say things like that, it's like divisive. It's like you're, you're, you're yeah. putting it out that somebody doesn't need a person. And an a r is not there to tell you what to do. An yeah. a r is there to help and to guide. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And... I feel a little, I don't feel a way about that, but I know somebody who works with her and I'm not saying that she's lying or nothing, but I feel like that kind of diminishes what that person could bring to the table when mm. you say something like that. Like, yeah. so, I mean, salute to her though. You know what I mean? Salute to her. I'm happy that that girl, I think she's a star. I thought she, I told her she was a star when I met her and I think she's going to get every fucking thing she came for yeah. and more. It was like some back and forth if she was like a drill artist or not a drill artist. What do you think? I mean, I think, when I think of drill, I think of violence. Oh my God. No, that's a fact. That's what drill is. Like, if you look at the, the the term drill, right? And I'm talking about when Chief Keef and them came out. I was in the last year of my twenties. I was 29 when okay. Don't Like came out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When they was talking about drilling and all that, going on a drill, they was talking about going to do something to somebody. Yeah, yeah. So if I, I don't. I mean, words evolve and words change, and we yeah. give words different meanings. But if we talk about the like the um, pure context of what drill means and that if it was in an urban dictionary, it'd be about killing shit and spinning shit and spinning blocks. And I think she used elements of that sound, but she was talking about love. Mm -hmm. The other thing that got her, you know, really seen was she don't look like nobody. Like that's one of yeah. the biggest, she, is you, the hair, the, the hair, her yeah. face, like she doesn't look like anybody, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I mean, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't consider her a drill artist, but she yeah. definitely used like drill elements in her music and there's nothing wrong with that. Do you think, um, NBA Youngboy makes drill music? Um, No. I don't think he makes drill music because he has all types of songs. He has more than one type of song. Okay. But I do think that like yeah. NBA Youngboy, like, he makes a lot of the same songs though. Like, you know what I mean? He has a lot of the same songs, but NBA Youngboy also uses melody too. Like he uses yeah. melody in a sense, but he does talk about killing shit. I think it was just like, not it's not funny, but it's like the, the crazy thing about um some artists now mm -hmm. is NBA Youngboy, and I'm not I'm not saying he's Tupac. I'm not gonna say that. Cause okay. I grew up on Tupac and I okay. seen Tupac in real time as a kid. But I think that the biggest thing that Tupac provided was showing how humans embody hypocrisy. And um, because Tupac, one day he wanted to save niggas, the next day he wanted to kill niggas. <laughs> one day he wanted to yeah. uplift his black sisters, the next day he wanted all the bitches. And that was what being a human is. Like, yeah. you don't, fit, you can fit two. through feelings, yeah. Right, so I think that NBA young boy like when he did that whole, I'm scared of people, all that shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then the next two weeks later, he was killing shit on record. Like, yeah. it's just like, oh, okay, you know what I mean? But I don't, I don't know. He's an enigma, for real. That kid's an enigma. The reason I asked was because you said like drills, like violence. I feel like people yeah. listen to the young boy in that mood also. Well, I, I mean, I'm happy you said that too, because me, Charlemagne, all of like, I have a group chat with a few of us and we talk about this all the time, but mm -hmm. like drill is a certain style. Okay. But to me, like, I could go on and say that Styles P was a drill artist. Mm -hmm. Styles P was one of the most. Styles mm -hmm. P, I love Styles P to death. Yeah. He's a he's. A, I grew up as a fan of him, and he became like a brother to me, an older brother to me. But Styles P had a record called "Shoot Him in the Head." Mm -hmm. Shoot him in the face of the chest, then shoot him on the waist of the neck, then shoot him in the gut and the mouth, then shoot him in the back, and don't stop till the blood running out. He mm -hmm. said that on record. I mean, we like to pretend that the golden era was like this substance and all these great niggas was just rap, rapping at the barbecue yeah, about good times. No, nah, niggas was rapping about cutting shit. Kill. The locks had me carrying knives. You feel me? Like, uh -huh. the, so I think that like everything comes from something. Yeah. And everything comes from something. It comes from the streets. If you have, if we talking about the streets, we talking about criminal activity. Yeah. Whenever it's criminal activity and it translates the song, you're going to get violence in that. And it mm. comes from a certain place. It comes from the environment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether it's right or wrong, it's coming from an honest place. So, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm saying that to say I don't be trying to be too hard on the drill kids, yeah. for real. I feel like it's, it's fairly new. I feel like we're still combing through it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I hope it like sticks around. Do you feel like drill's ending? I don't think it's ending, but I think that some things need to change because um, 
So the biggest thing I have when it comes to like drill is that New York has not had an identity in almost 30 years. What I mean by that is, is like once Bloods and Crips became a thing in New York, mm -hmm. we did not have no identity because if you, and I didn't learn this until I started being around like people from LA who was Bloods and Crips. Yeah. If you go out there and you see like, Somebody banging a flag or something. Well, not even banging a flag. It don't It don't be like, it, it's really like a neighborhood thing. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm from a building called 1900. Mm -hmm. My neighborhood was a blood neighborhood. If I was, if it was like LA, it'd be, it wouldn't be a certain, it'd be 1900 bloods. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when you start saying that you, another place and you, they 1900 bloods, you're like, they not from our building. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what I mean by like the drill shit is they, New York, not just New York. Black youth in all of America has emulated Chicago from 2012, oh, yeah. Yeah. from the slang to the Artist the names, the slang, the names. The, the listen, I grew up with a lot of people who did a lot of shit in the street. I never seen something happen in a motherfucker disrespect a person after they they did whatever they had to do. Mm -hmm. That was something that Chicago was doing. That because I think that the youth of America, and I, and I said this before, I feel like is a lot of black men from my generation and the generation before me filled our children. They that's what that's why we get the results that we have. Yeah. That's why these niggas act out the way they do. Cause we a lot of us filled our children. Um mm -hmm. when I look at um like the drill scene, yeah, these kids is emulating Chief Keith and them because they looked at it and they was able to see themselves. Mm -hmm. They was able to look and say, sure. we be just like that. Yeah. And then you know, naturally we gravitate to a shit. Yeah. And, and 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 the New York gang structure, how it how the kids from they adapted to Chicago shit, they they uncontrollable. So it's a lot of the same. It's, these kids are still sex money murders and all of this and that and the third. Mm -hmm. But the older dudes can't control them because they didn't guide them. Yeah, and you know I saying? feel like they're kind of chiming in a little late, I guess. Yeah. Because like I feel like now you know once you get eighteen, nineteen, you in your habit, you in your ways. And stuff like that. So, like, trying to pull them out now is kind of. But like, the, but you know why they're chiming in now? Because they done went to jail for the shit. They didn't. They didn't came home from doing twenty some years, and they seeing their little cousins that they left that was two years old. Mm -hmm. That's twenty two now. Going crazy. That and they're like, damn, this is what we. Let. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. when you get the older, you get your perspective changes, and then you you want to prevent shit. But it's like, I'm not saying this. It, it's it can't change at all. Mm -hmm. But it's like. The reason why it's not changing at the pace that we like to is because we talking at these kids and not with them. We're yeah. not really trying to sit down and say, well, what's going on? We like, don't do that because we would have did it this way. Yeah. That's it's, not never going to work. It's a lot of that. I think the whole, like, when the mayor was trying to ban drill music, I think artists are really bothered by that. Um, yeah. And I feel like just, I think that, like, hearing your favorite artists say, like, they don't fuck with drill music is mad disheartening, knowing, like, I think artists just be kind of, like, venting in the music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. I feel like just hearing your favorite artists say, like, yeah, they're not fucking with drill music is like, because I, But that's because they're not fucking with the, the res they're not fucking with the, like... The moral of it, yeah. Well, not the moral. I say more of the foundation of, like, where it stems. Like, like, like they're not fucking with... A lot of these kids is talented as fuck, but yeah. it's like... That's why I brought up the locks as an example. I could bring up Mob D, but they all rapped about death and killing and this, that, and the third, but they rap from a sense of, like, not saying that they doing it, but it could have happened. Yeah. When they when 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 they when the older artists now were looking back and they're looking at these kids and they saying, damn, he really that really happened. Yeah. That really happened. that could have been my nah, I can't support that. Okay. That I think that's what it but I think that instead of just saying, nah, we can't support that, it needs to be a little bit more transparency. Yeah. You gotta pull up on a, a and I Dougie B, I love that kid. Yeah. You gotta pull up on him and say, yo, bro, like you know, you talented and all that, but it's another way how you can handle how you doing what you are doing. Well, Dougie B, I, I would say is one of the ones that definitely opened up about him being depressed and like mm -hmm. him just kind of going through his thing. So mm -hmm. a lot of them kind of keep that under wraps, for real. But um, even like, damn, I was gonna say we were about Dougie B. So um, what I was gonna say was that okay, so how do you feel about labels signing them? Um, like drill kids. I feel like it'd be like a quick little cash grab to them, honestly. Yeah. But I feel like that's my personal opinion. No, it is. It, it's not making... And that's the thing, right? 
But people think that a sign, like you said, it's not no shows going on. So where's all this money going? Well, the money <laughs> it's making money, but it's really regional. So I had this yeah. conversation yeah. with an executive when I was at um, Asylum, and Asylum is like a derivation of Atlantic, yeah. and we was just having a conversation about like it was after King Von died, mm -hmm. and it was just like the perception is is that you we are worth more dead, but you're not. You know what I'm saying? Pop Smoke family, his estate, his mom, everybody he loves, he'd be doing way more, if, it'd be way better if he was here. Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And I think that like, people try to position like this, oh, they just setting it up. No, like, we can't deny the talent. I think the, the reason why these kids, because you can't deny the talent, mm -hmm. but then a lot of people who sign these kids, they, and I know for a fact, because I know most of these people is my friends, the executives that sign these kids, mm -hmm. they have hopes of them saying, we don't want you to stop like directly making that music, but we want you to shift. Shift, yeah. And 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 you still probably gonna make music a certain way, but like mm -hmm. shift it a little bit and you could really turn it into something yeah. if you could leave this side away. But the problem is, is that it's not enough curation, it's not enough prevention it's not enough and i don't want to regulate it to the big homies. oh big homies that shit is bullshit you know how many motherfuckers i know older than me do the same shit that them kids do oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like it, it's it's, it's not an age thing. but it's not like, we're not seeing true stars come out of it yeah and a lot of these kids got a chance you know what i'm yeah. saying a lot of them got a chance it's just it take a little bit more like you know i gotta salute my brother steve carlos you know what i mean over at warner he signed shy k yeah. um he signed a few a few uh, up and coming kids out the city, and yeah. you know he's trying to take that that approach and that path. So I gotta yeah. salute him for that. Yeah. So Warner is finally like, well, not finally, but they've got a chance to get a stage at Summer Jam, which mm -hmm. is really dope. Um, I feel like that's kind of the first one. I mean, Drewski had Summer Jam last year mm -hmm. with Red Dagger and stuff, but this is like the first actual stage with like multiple drill artists. So right. That's cool. Um. Yeah, and uh, and then they, he got them on the radio and stuff, so just mm -hmm. a little bit of all of that. Okay, so moving back into music though. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you see how like it's like drill, then it's like Jersey Club and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. So a lot of songs right now, it'll be like a song, like I don't know if you've seen like Two C how favorite song was going viral, mm -hmm. and then he had um, Khalid get on the remix, and then he released something called a Toxic Remix with Future. With Future, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how are you feeling about multiple remixes? Of it's always been like that. It's been like that for a minute. You know what I mean? I mean, think about. Remember when Game had One Blood, and he had like mad different. Yeah, he had mad different. He had the One Blood with like all the girls. I think he had One Blood with like all dudes. And he had the East Coast One Blood and the West Coast One Blood. Like yeah. people, I mean. It could be overkill to an extent, but I'm not mad at people trying to squeeze the fucking orange as much as they can. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, get what you can out of that shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a little it's overkill for me right now. Yeah. I mean, but the thing about it is, the reason why it's overkill is because people get tired of shit so fast. So you got to keep something else for them. It's like, all right, it's like you could drop, you could, what people don't realize is like the consumer. Mm -hmm. When we put out a project, we take months working, flying here, working with these producers, swapping this song for this song, can't clear that. And when we finally get a track list to you and we, del and we give it, deliver it to you, the fans are taking, they listen, they like, oh shit, that was good. When's the next one? Like, when's the next one? Like, do you know what it just took? Yo, I tell people this all the time. Yeah. I've never dealt with a Beyonce level of clearance when it comes to working with an artist, mm -hmm. but I can only fucking imagine. Like every time Beyonce drops, right? She got all her videos done. I think the last album she ain't had her videos, right? Yeah. But she has her videos done usually, her performances set up. Do you know how much, if a motherfucker understood how much it take to clear one song, you got it. go buy it, appreciate it, share it, mm -hmm. do whatever with it because they these artists is taking time to be vulnerable to deliver you something. Yeah, it's gonna make them money, but they put in their heart and soul, whether it's drill, whether it's fucking just straight lyrical, R and B. I don't give a fuck if you doing uh Latin shit, whatever they doing. If a motherfucker give you something that you could feel like is good, make sure you get that word out for them for real, because it takes a lot. Yeah. And I feel like the fact that we get music every Friday does not help. Yeah, it's too. It's, it's a lot, yo. Like, it's a lot. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so I'm, we're going to play. I got another game. We Let's play, play game. nine games over here. So, like, I'm going to start the sentence. You finish the sentence. Okay. I like okay. that. So, my favorite campaign I worked on was... Keisha by Davies. Yeah, why is that? Oh, man. It was a great... It was a great thing. I mean, Dave had... We were working on uh, the Kyrie Chanel project, and we... It was just a great year for us. Dave had got we had did two sold out shows in Japan that year. Mm. We had um we had our first tour, our first headlining tour, that was his tour. We had um tons of features, tons of freestyles that was moving. We had offers on the table from every single um every single label. Mm. And the reason why the Keisha thing was so big for us was because Dave had this record where he told a story. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me and my team helped bring that story to life. It was like, he just wrote it. Like, I mean, it wasn't an actual thing that happened. Yeah. But the whole Keisha thing, it was, um, I t- when, when Dave did it and we started talking about the video, it was, we had a show in D.C. And I, we, we drove down to D.C. and I was driving back home and I was listening to the song. I was like, I came up with an idea for it. And I was like, I wanted the, the video to be him with no jewelry on, okay. sitting in the park, explaining to his homies, what happened to him, and it was because I watched, I'm a big Marvel fan, and I watched mm-hmm. Ant-Man, and in the first Ant-Man movie, this character, every time he told a story while he was talking, he would be saying something, and the character that he was talking about would, would recite his words. So I was like, that's how the video gotta be. Yeah. It gotta be you saying this shit happened, and when I, and, and what we did was I said, yo, listen, we ain't gonna get no Dominican girl, mm-hmm. we ain't gonna get no, we gotta go get a fire um, black girl, and yeah. it was this young lady, um, that worked in the BBC store okay. that I used to go to. And I asked, I said, yo, would you be, you know, in this video for us? And she was like, yeah. And what I did was I told Master Pill, I'm like, yo, let's make a wanted poster for her. So we made a wanted poster and we posted that shit everywhere around New York. Okay. So it was like so that campaign. Oh, man. The execute. Yeah, yeah. We had Tracy Ellis Ross. She did a video when that shit came. I was like, I just heard this song from Davies. I, I really want to know that he get robbed. Like, you know what I mean? It became a thing. Like, yeah, it became yeah. a thing. So I was really proud of that. Like, it was Dave. It was Dave's lyricism. And then, like, you know, all of us coming together on the marketing and just making something dope happen. Nice. Okay. My go-to track when I need motivation is? My go-to track when I need motivation. Oh, shit. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. My go-to track when I need motivation mm-hmm. Is um hmm I say Thug Motivation One on One Intro by Jeezy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Music was the best when I was a child. An artist campaign I like to be a part of is an artist campaign that I would like to be a part of. Mm-hmm. Ugh, um. <laughs> something you see or. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was necessarily would be something. I, I'm. I'll say I'm working on something special with Ice with Vezo. So. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Mhm. Okay. Our artists that should be bigger than they are right now is. K Flock. Mhm. Um. An unlikely artist collab I want to see happen is. Drake and Nas. I wish artists these days would stop. Posting everything. <laughs> and an upcoming artist should always. An upcoming artist should always trust the process. Okay. All right, that's cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So speaking of Iceway Rezzo, he did give you flowers on um on on the radar. Mm-hmm. And he was just kind of saying like he appreciated you for getting him in the studio and stuff like that. So I guess Getting artists in that groove, I guess, of leaving the street life, because, you know, it takes time. So, I guess, how did you, you kind of just, what, explain how your story kind of went? Or, like, how you... No, I just... Uh, you see yourself in them, so it's kind of easy to talk through? Nah, not necessarily. I'll say, um, I'm a good motivator. Okay. If you if you around me long enough... I'm going to make you believe in your motherfucking self. Like if you if you doubt yourself, mm-hmm. if you I don't give a fuck if it's if it's uh you going on any type of journey, if you trying to become a public speaker, if you going to school, anything, I I'm a good encourager. So, I'll say like it, it varies with different artists. The thing with like Ice with Vezo and what he was specifically talking about was like I got him and I got baby money. 
Mm-hmm. And um, they both live in Detroit and they both from Detroit mm-hmm. and they see each other all the time. And I came up, like we've been talking about them doing a tape yeah. for a minute and they be in the studio with each other and don't do no music. Do music. So it's like, I told them, I just called them. I called Vezo one day. I said, yo, I'm about to book a trip. I'm about to book myself to come out to Detroit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell Baby Money. I'm going to tell Los. We're going to go to the studio and I'm going to bring my man. I brought my man Mitch and we just came up with, like, we just was making records every day, every okay. day, every day. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's like, because look, the funny thing was after I left, they were supposed to finish. After I left, they didn't record no more songs together. And they seen each other every day after that. Like, almost every day. I didn't say every day, but almost. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you definitely had to put that battery on them to get them going. Yeah. Okay, so, so working with, so when you moved to Atlanta, was mm-hmm. the QC job already, like, locked in, or did you get that, like, when you got out there? No, no, it was already locked in. Okay. It was, yeah, it was already locked in. It was like, I, I, I moved out there because I knew what I was doing. Like, I had already been talking, me and P had been talking, mm-hmm. f- like, since... Right before the pan, like right when the pandemic started, mm-hmm. um, when Baby dropped my turn, like when Baby dropped my turn, I still was doing everyday struggle. Yeah. He wanted Baby on the show, I got Baby on the show, and then like you know we just had a conversation, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Yo, I'll, if it makes sense, I would love to have you be a part of QC." And then when he told me that, I, I was nothing else on my mind. I said, "That's what I'm gonna do," okay. and um, I just leaned into it. So I had. I hadn't officially started on paper, but I was already doing stuff behind the scenes. I had stopped at Asylum. Um, mm-hmm. Like, like when you get a job like that, you got to get a deal just like an artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got to sign a contract. So yeah. while my contract was getting worked at, I was just, um, you know, just working behind the scenes with mm-hmm. certain artists and shit, trying to bring what I could to the table. So it was it was locked in. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you, are y'all looking to sign more artists, I guess? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Shit, the... The, the the lights stay on by us <laughs> keep going, you know what I mean? We can't stop with one, you know? Yeah. Okay, so it was a big controversy when QC sold their catalog. They didn't sell a catalog. Or what? Well, you know more. I don't know if you can I don't even know that. that much. I could speak on what I know, but I don't know that much. But they didn't sell a catalog. What they did was, um, from my understanding, you know, when you have a business, right? Mm-hmm. You have a hundred percent of there's a hundred percent of a yeah. business and a hundred percent of a business could be divvied up between whomever's involved. I don't know what this one got versus that one, none of that. But yeah. what they did, what I do know, what I can speak on is that Hybe is a company that's a very big company, you know, ran by School of Braun and a if, few if his colleagues. I don't know the yeah. guy, I can't remember the guy's name who owns Hybe, but I met some of the Hybe people and they do really, really good fucking work and they brought into a piece of QC. So we partnered. Okay. They bought in. You know what it's I mean? Like, okay. Yeah, they, it's a partnership. It's not they sold QC for X amount of dollars. Okay, and okay. Cause it's, it's, and the, the thing about it is, is like, would you rather own, what is the saying? Would you rather own um, All of uh, 10, 10, 10% of 10% of a watermelon or 100% of a grape? You know what I mean? Like, you you would rather take a, a small percentage. Like I remember um Jay Z was just talking with Kevin Hart and he was like, Our people are so conditioned to believe that like if you own one percent of something that you ain't got shit. Meanwhile, that one percent might be worth hundreds of millions of yeah, dollars, right. you know what I'm saying? Sure. But it's Yeah, weird. I feel like, you know, like people that don't understand the business always tend to speculate like fans and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, people's like, Oh, he a sellout, blah blah blah. I feel like it's business. <laughs> And I feel like if you don't understand business, you wouldn't understand why it was done. But that's the that's the problem that we have, right? Speaking on things without information, mm-hmm. speaking on things sure. without context. Everybody's so fast to say something based on a headline. I'm pretty sure nobody who saw the headline read. Most people who commented about it did not read the article because yeah. if you read the article, it said what it meant. You know what I mean? And that's the problem. Is like we so quick to jump to conclusions mm-hmm. based on. That right there, instead of reading some yeah, shit. Okay. But you, there's a famous saying: you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but um, QC also have pro- a production company, I believe. Didn't QC they, is a production company. Is a production company, yeah. But I know they did. <laughs> didn't they do the Impact Show also? Mm-hmm. Right. So, QC is at one point in time, which it was a, a record label, is a multimedia. Company, we have a branch that's QC Quality Films. Yeah. We have a branch that's Solid Foundation. That's our management company, yeah. and we have a branch um, QC Films, Solid Foundation, and we have a branch that's QC Sports, which is our sports, yeah, company. sports company. We have a sports agency. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're working on other branches. We're mm-hmm. working on building other things. You know, like. 
QC is positioned in itself to be one of the a major. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like you you can't. The thing about it is I'm not, like you have to have partners. Oh, yeah. And you have to have business to expand and grow. And so many people don't know that. And they just think, oh, you let a white man do business with you so you don't. No, he, like, they think that school, they think Scooter Braun is coming in the office saying, Wayne, don't get the fucking work. Get off your phone. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, nah. I, I definitely see that y'all have creative control for sure. Because mm -hmm. even the whole production of the Impact show, I felt like was so necessary at the time. Yeah. I felt like reality TV was in such a decline. And I feel like those are all girls that all these girls look up to mm -hmm. anyway. We got the impact. We work with um, Issa Random on rap shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we that was get, a good one too. Yeah, we got So a, that was based on the City Girls, right? Rap shit? I believe it's loosely based on them. Okay. I believe it's loosely based on them, but you got rap shit. You got the little baby documentary that was partnered with Amazon um, with, with Amazon Prime. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, you got to, you know, you want to... Divvy up. If you look at any major corporation, you look at the NFL, you look mm -hmm. at the MLB, the NBA, or you look at shit Target. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. they partner with different companies to bring certain types of product and certain types of content and different things. And it's mm -hmm. like it's when when you do it in music and you partner up with somebody, they like oh you 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 didn't let them in. You that shit ain't real no more. Mm -hmm. no, I feel like we need. I feel like just being black, we we have. I feel like being black, we have a cap on the amount of money we can make technically. What you mean? In the sense of like making black, making money being black from black people. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, but I don't agree, necessarily agree with that. I feel like, so then. You mean being like, you think that the only way for us to be successful is to be fully black owned? No, I think we do need to partner with white people, but I think that like, I think we need to partner with whomever has the great who, who has great business <laughs> opportunities for us, whether they white, black, Chinese, Korean, whatever. Like we need to partner with whomever has great business ideologies that we can learn yeah. and we could look at their infrastructure and say, "Oh, that's how y'all did it on y'all side." All right, well we going to come in and we going to learn this so that we could build bigger business for us. I guess the reason I'm saying that is because like a lot of our peers, I guess, don't learn enough to get to those levels. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? I'll say, from my own experience, and I had a person tell me this, is that when it comes to hip-hop specifically and hip-hop culture, mm -hmm. um, and a white person told me this, that we know how to create. We know how to we know how to get some There's shit popping, this and a third, yeah. but not enough of us in certain seats take the time to learn the business. And that's why a lot of major corporations get over, because... While we in the studio till five o'clock in the morning, or while we not sleeping and doing all this other type of shit. Nine a.m. doing the paperwork. And not saying that we ain't up at nine a.m. doing the paperwork, but a lot of us are more in love with like the, art of the, it the how it looks versus the the back end of the business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. that's that's one of the reasons why I came to QC so I could learn another level of business that I hadn't known. Mm -hmm. Being around a coach and P, a Simone, Tamika, everybody, Branja, everybody on our team, you know what I mean? So I could go and align with people that I hadn't worked with and get a little bit smarter and build. Smarter. Okay. Okay, do you have like um a goals for yourself? I guess do you like want to do a label of your own or do you want Nah, I don't want no label. <laughs> I did that already. Okay. I did that already. I don't want no label. I don't I don't want a label because like um I had to look at myself like this, right? And I'm not taking nothing away from myself. I know that I'm very fucking good at what I do, yeah. regardless of the people who don't know what it is that I do, but I know I'm really, really good at what I do. And I know that I know how to um, get things going. I know that I'm trustworthy and I'm dependable, but at the same time, it's like, I don't want to be the man. I don't want to be the Michael Jordan or the LeBron James. I don't want to be, I looked, I looked at myself as like, yo, I want to join a team where I can still be the man within my own right within that system and I can make tons of money and tons of connections and do great things and move around how I want. But I don't want to be the guy that, because I've been that guy. I don't want to do that. Gotta answer everything. Yeah, I don't want to be that guy. That's not like, I don't want to have a label. That shit, people think that that shit is not easy. Oh, for sure. It's not easy. And um, I guess it took you time to find the, I guess, perfect team for you, right? Um. Or I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't necessarily say. I mean, I think perfect. Perfect is. I think it's perfect real, is but it's like real. But it's relative to um, what what you define what you defining it for, right? Yeah. Like for myself, everything got its pros and cons. Yeah, everything got its pros and cons. For me, it was more predicated on like, okay, I came from Rockefeller, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which was is one of the you 
depending on who you ask, it's the best label or it's not as good as that one or the other one, right? Mm -hmm. But I came from a very, very prestigious label. It's like going to a fucking Ivy League school, right? Like you come from this big school and shit and then I learned my skills and then I applied my skills independently and I had success. And then with them, with those skills and that success, I leveraged that to do other things. And then I leveraged those things to do other things. Mm -hmm. And then I got with another label and it was like, I learned that system. And then when I, by the time I got the QC, it's like, all right, now I'm taking all the experiences that I've had up until then and I'm trying to add to the pot so that I could bring some shit to the table so I could grow within the system. And who knows, I could be at QC forever, I could be going tomorrow, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The thing is, is that I know what I'm gonna be responsible for and what I'm gonna bring to the table. Okay. Okay, and then like just, I guess, adjusting from, I guess working in New York to working in Atlanta, is it a big difference or is it pretty the same? Yeah, it's a big difference. Okay, so what is like some of the pros and cons, I guess? I mean, the only thing about Atlanta, everything's slow. Everything's okay. slow. I don't mean people. <laughs> I just mean, well, people, I don't mean, I don't mean stupidity slow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just think like think reaction time to certain things is, is different. You know what I mean? Like in New York, I'm used to being able to like that. Everything busting all day. Yeah. yeah it, out, out there, it's like a little bit more time, a little bit, things just move a little bit slower. Um, what I like about Atlanta is... Um, I feel like there's a little bit more creativity okay. down there when it comes to the music side because most of the producers and songwriters in the space that I work in, I'm not saying in everybody's space, but in the space I work in, in hip hop, a lot of them is down there, a lot of them is in Miami, and a lot of them is in LA. Yeah. New York is not the same thing. Even with the studios, like New York studios, I feel like. Super pricey. They're, yeah, they're super pricey and it's a big divide, right? It's like you seldomly see a studio where like it's this open space where, yo, y'all over in this room, y'all over in this room, y'all over in this room, and we coming together. And, and that's another misconception. Atlanta, the people from New York think that everybody in Atlanta gets along. That shit is not true. These <laughs> motherfuckers have shootouts with each other all the time, you know what I mean? But I think that um just culturally down there in Atlanta, right, like they bought their bread. So they trying to, like, that's why Thug... You know what I mean, and the whole YSL shit was so embrace of a uh, Savage and Twenty and, and, and Savage and, and Slaughter Gang mm -hmm. and Four PF and yeah. they had their synergy and you know what I mean, and that's how you get the 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 when, when it was that time the Offset Metro Boom and the Twenty One Savage album without warning because mm -hmm. everybody's they moving and shaking here. It's it's super ego driven. It's crew driven. It's mm -hmm. man, them niggas like I'm from I'm from the East Side. You know what I mean, the Harlem like. There's dudes from the West Side and be like, yeah, they cool, but those East Side niggas, we don't really fuck with them like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna prevent us getting money being, just yeah. from being geographical, and it's you know, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I feel like right now, I feel like there's a lot of like TikTok stars, a lot of content being made. Um, right now, I've been seeing like a lot of artists kind of complain that like they feel like they turn into content creators. I mean. <laughs> Listen, you could make money with all of this shit. Get it how you live. I think that like the biggest thing is look at T Pain, who was one of the biggest man. T Pain was a fucking He was cool. He was nice. Super sold tons of records, all of that. But it came to a point where people was like threw T Pain away. Like they didn't want to fuck with T Pain no more. And once T Pain became a content creator and made his show on Twitch and all of that, yeah. he said he's like, "Yo, I'm making more money doing this than I did making music." Mm -hmm. Now I think that you know everybody got their own path for how they want to go after it, but mm -hmm. you know we in a space where people accept everything. People accept different things from artists. Yeah. Look at Carisha. She has, you know, she's the city girl. Carisha, the city girl, my young Miami. But then Carisha has become its own brand. Yeah. But she does her talk show and she does her modeling or whatever else she's into. You know what I mean? So, I mean, get, we black people, this is our culture, man. Get as much as you can while you can because you can't do this shit forever. So you're saying it's not, a, it's not a bad thing? It's a bad thing if you uh, don't have a mission. Okay. I think if you don't have a mission and you just trying shit, okay. just to throwing shit at the wall, you, I think you got to have a plan. We got four quarters of a year. That's three month increments. We get that four times. You got to plan January, February, March. Then April, May, June, yeah. July, August, September, October, November, December. Yeah. You got to plan that shit out and, mm -hmm. you know, repeat. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, they just have to, I feel like it began played out a little bit sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying, I see why they do it. 
Um, mm -hmm. Okay, last last thing we're going to touch on. No problem. I feel like R&B artists right now aren't in the spotlight as much as they used to. Really? Kind of. And then Diddy did this whole thing about how R&B is dead. So you think R&B is very much still here? The, the hell well, no, R&B. You know, we got the some stuff going on right now. The place that you get the most substance is R&B. SZA, Summer Walker. Yeah, SZA went crazy. Listen, I just ended on my first R&B oh, album with Layton Green. Out, you know what I mean? Layton. She's coming back out. Yeah, late and we dropping this year. You know what okay. I'm saying? So, listen, R and B. I think R and B's in a great place. Okay. Um, it's of course it's not singing in the rain R and B how it used to be. Okay. But at the same time, it's like you know things change. It's like things evolve. Like people have different perspectives. Like we mm -hmm. can't look at the generation before. We can't look at the generation after us and say they doing it all wrong because we're not living in their times. We don't know what what, what affects them directly, mm -hmm. right? Um. I think that Diddy saying that he's Diddy, but at the same time, just because he Diddy don't mean that he end all be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like his perspective comes from the fucking nineties. Well, That's yeah. a lot. R and B artists is really bothered by that. That was yeah, thing because there's people still putting pain, and you got Jacquees yeah. out here. Definitely he's still so. doing work. Like I said, some of you got Tink. Tink yeah, put Tink together really, like, really good maker, albums. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so many people. Coco Jones. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of a lot of these young people is putting in the work. And like you said, imagine hearing somebody you grew up on saying that shit is trash or that ain't it. And they might not even be directing it at you because Diddy didn't say a name. But when you hear that, you're like, damn, bro, I'm out here. I'm trying my hardest. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So just, you know, I, don't, I think that we got to, again, because when I was growing up, I didn't hear the same way that the younger ones didn't disrespect the elders. I also didn't hear Big Daddy Kane trying to say, man, that JD Kiss nigga ain't really. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't hear Kumo D saying that shit. I ain't hear none of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you gotta let the you gotta let the youth be the youth and yeah. like we, we gotta guide them a bit and we gotta work with them, not against them. You feel me? I agree. So what is, what 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 you you be talking? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like this was good. This is a good convo. Um, I appreciate you look? for having me. For sure. I mean, I appreciate you for coming. Nah, that's so good. So um, so like, what? How could we? I guess in, keep in tune with you. Um, of course. Are when, you podding again? Yeah, I'm about to. So I had you know, if anybody was following my journey, um, yes. after everyday struggle, I went to Amazon and I did um. Connected with Wayne though. I did a few like yeah. one-off shows with them. Yeah. Um, we about to bring Connected back in a different, unique way. Okay. Um, I'm working on some, doing some AMP, you know, stuff. Again, yeah. I just did the unpop um, Unpopular Opinions with AMP. Yeah. I did that with Pigeons and Planes. And then I had my, my podcast, um, Hear Me Out with Wayne yeah. Um It's coming back, but it's not going to be so much only me. Okay. Before it was like me and my producer and we would just kick it and talk. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to change it up a bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's coming. I got some shit coming. Okay. Want to talk to some young people? I'm here. Of course. I definitely <laughs> want to talk to the youth, man. You know, like shit. That's how I stay young. No, I definitely... Yeah, I feel like these conversations are necessary. I feel like mm -hmm. it'd be hard to like connect with, you know, everybody be working, everybody be busy. Yeah. I feel like I chopped, I chopped it up with you. I chopped it up with Adam before too, but mm -hmm. like, not too many of the media people. Yeah. I mean, I, like it'd be cliche for me to say I'm not a media person because I do work in that space. But at the mm -hmm. same time, like I never forget what it's like to just be, Everybody asks what the 119 on my, my name means. It's, I'm from 119th and Lexington Avenue. Yeah. I never forget who that kid was growing up, trying to strive, trying to be like, trying to be something, trying to work hard and make something of myself. So when I see like you doing it, or I see Gabe, you know what I mean, and yeah. all of them over at, and John and them over at on the radar, yeah. or I see you know my home girl Nyla Simone doing yeah, her thing. Know, yeah. I pay it forward. Like I feel good when it like I'm able to share you know knowledge and information, and mm -hmm. if that shit helps you get like a step further than I've done my job you know what I mean yeah. that's what I'm about I feel like even just the motivation and pep talks for real too is helpful because yeah. we kind of need to hear like we're on the right track I feel like like I said we all kind of hard on ourselves right now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna speak for me and my I'm gonna keep it 100 as much as I'm doing right and people might I don't have this and I'm you know what I mean and, and what I would say about that is because you know and I'm not saying you know how when you say something yeah I got a show and they be like or somebody might explain it they, I got a little I got a little whatever, right? I don't, for me, trying to do my own podcast, I don't have a space where I have people that could come yet. I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. And people say, but you way know, right? You got it figured out. You know all these Bills, things. This whole type of shit. Oh, listen, <laughs> you, you feel me? But at the same time, right? 
that's why I can speak to it and say you doing your right thing because it's all about consistency. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep doing this shit and you don't stop and you just, listen, talk to as many people as you can, have the good conversation. Mm -hmm. Man, listen, 10 years from now, ain't no telling. You might have a fucking Tonight Show. Yeah. You might have a, ain't no telling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, you, you, you definitely in the right space. You gonna be in the right space because you want to be in the right space. You just got to do the work. Yeah. That's where, see, that's where hard work beats the potential yeah. moniker. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That hard work, that work ethic will always beat the, is he or she going to be something one day? Let's see how they work. Yeah. It's crazy because I wasn't ever on an uh, on-camera person. I was really a behind-the-scenes person. Mm -hmm. like, I'm trying to, like, get into it. And I've been like, I think I, I've, I've dibbled and dabbled in the music industry, for real. I, st I don't fully understand it. Yeah, listen. I'm going to be honest, bro. I, I'm still learning shit as we go along. Like, there's no, there's one thing about information is information is infinite. You know what I mean? Knowledge is the only currency that cannot be taxed from you. It cannot be taken away from you when you have knowledge. So the thing about it is, is that you never stop learning. You never stop growing up. Yeah. Me being a 40-year-old man, I'm still growing up to be 50 and I I hope I get up to 60 and 70 and 80 so I'm mm -hmm. still growing up I'm still learning you know what I mean so yeah. don't ever feel like there's a point in time where like you ain't getting it all or, it comes it comes in a spurts you know what I'm saying it comes okay. in a spurts and I'll be hearing a lot of people like early stories and I'll be like damn I oh listen I was broke <laughs> broke as fuck just even like learning like they could have made money in certain situations that they didn't yeah there's tons of things that I could have did where I could have made bread and I just didn't know and it's yeah. things where I was willing to risk and, and, and try to make money and fail like I think that you need like you, a part I was saying this to you know my brother like I wear my losses on my face. Like, my losses is my face tags. I would never have a problem talking about any loss I've ever taken because when you look at my success and you look at how it's come, it's a product of that. If I don't embrace how, you know, at one point in time, I might have thought that I knew this, I knew that, I knew the other, and I learned from that, then how can I pay it forward to the next person? If I just act like I got this, oh, that's why I don't, I don't do the clubhouse shit because everybody on clubhouse used to be acting like Yo. they was the fucking ultimate masterminds and they no, knew everything yeah. you got to be able to have a transparency because the thing about it is no what i was saying before nobody wants to take the l yeah. nobody wants to look like everybody was top dog on club man you now look i'm gonna keep it 100 <laughs> you ain't gonna find no pictures and no stories of me looking crazy and me doing no silly shit yeah, yeah. but this points in times where i didn't have much i lived in a, i had two i had three children in a one bedroom apartment me and my wife mm -hmm. you know what i mean just us and then we moved to another apartment in the projects. And then we moved up out of that because I, I was on my shit. Yeah. You feel me? But the thing, the takeaway from it is don't never, you know, don't, don't, don't doubt. You're going to doubt yourself, but snap out of it. Yeah. I mean, work hard and just keep going and you won't be good. Yeah. Appreciate that. I appreciate you. So, I mean, if they don't know, tell the people where to find you. How you find me Wayne 119 <laughs> on everything. You know what I'm saying? If Wayne 119 on everything. Um, and... You know, just look out for me. I got some stuff coming on the media side. Uh, make sure you checking out Baby Money, Duke Deuce, uh, Fezzo, oh, yeah. well, Lakia. Let me get that song with Bobby Shmurda. We saw that. Oh, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's a remix. We the 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 thing was is like Bobby did it, but when he did it, we had already turned the album in last year. So it's a record that came out, but we about to drop it soon. You know what I mean? Just for the people. But yeah, I mean, look out for everything QC. You know, we got QC Sports, Quality Films, Solid Foundation Management, and Quality Control Music. You know. Maybe you maybe you'll I'll end up signing you one day. Never know. <laughs>